Hello and welcome to this on-demand webcast on best practices in predictive analytics for collections. I'm Marie van der Bell, Marketing Manager at Angos, and co-presenting with me is Amanda Biedem, one of our senior data scientists who has worked in predictive analytics for over 15 years, supporting a range of verticals including financial services, telco, insurance, retail and healthcare. This webcast will share how our Angos approach to analytics-driven collection strategies can help collections departments to meet their objectives. Collections departments are faced with the following three objectives. Increasing recoveries, improving customer satisfaction, and minimizing operational costs. Debt recovery translates into a direct increase in revenue as it ensures that a percentage of accounts which would otherwise default pay either in full or in part. Understanding how best to communicate with and manage debtors will make them more likely to respond to your collection's efforts as well as continue to do business with you once their debts have been paid. Managing accounts receivable can be expensive. Determining how to maximize recoveries while minimizing resources spent will positively impact net profit earned from revenues. Collections analytics can help to positively influence each of these areas for improved business performance without compromising one business objective for the sake of another. Within collections analytics, several factors should be considered. Often it is important to consider the type of debtor, as different people behave in different ways. Segmenting accounts based upon payment behaviour is one way to improve your collections model. Secondly, it is important to consider at what stage within the collections lifecycle the debtor is. We know that debtors within the early stage of the collections process are much more likely to repay than those at the later stage of the collections process. Thirdly, it is important to define what we want to predict. We would like to predict whether the customer is likely to repay, but we may also want to determine the potential recovery amount. Amanda will now take you through our suggested approach to using predictive analytics in your collection strategy. Angos suggests using a payback and best channel methodology to address the collection strategy goals already discussed. Many organisations are finding that customers respond better to certain channels. For example, some customers are more likely to repay if contacted by letter whereas other customers will be more influenced to repay when contacted via phone. By identifying the channel that will result in the greatest chance of repayment and focusing resources there, operational costs can be minimised, recoveries increased and the write-off rate reduced. By contacting debtors fewer times through a channel that's more appropriate for them, customer satisfaction can be improved. Also, daily activity constraints can be taken into account, such as the maximum number of texts that can be sent per day. Let's take a look at the steps required for the payback and best channel approach. Step one is to mimic the existing business rules to establish a baseline performance of current collection strategies. Step two involves building a payback model to predict who will repay. The next step is to compare the existing business rules with the payback model. Next, we need to build a model for each communication channel. Each model will give the likelihood of repaying if contacted via that channel. Step five involves comparing the scores to determine the best channel for each customer. Next, the payback and best channel models are combined to build strategies, generate key performance indicators, apply treatments and activity constraints. And finally, we will deploy the model. Step one is to replicate the existing business rules. This indicates performance of the bank's current collection strategy and gives a baseline against which future models can be compared. At this stage, we're not building a predictive model, we're simply reproducing existing business rules. In this slide, we have the workflow, which incorporates the generation of key performance indicators to understand the impact of the current strategy, a decision tree, which replicates the current business rules, and also a strategy tree, which assigns communication channel based upon current constraints. Step two involves building a model which predicts the likelihood to pay back. The payback model is based on a logistic regression model. The model diagnostics are good. We can see that the C statistic is 0.85 and all independent variables are significant in the model. This means that we have a good model. We now need to understand how this model performs in comparison to the existing business rules. Step three is to compare the performance of the business rules and the payback model. The top chart shows the lift of the business rules and the payback model. The payback model is shown in blue and the business rules are shown in red. The payback model has significantly greater lift than the business rules. 
Also, if we look at the ROC chart underneath, we can see that the AUC statistic for the payback model is 0.86, which is well above the threshold of 0.75 that we need for a model to be considered robust. The business rules have a much lower C statistic, implying that the business rules are not so good at predicting payback behaviour. Step four involves building a model for each channel. We know that there are a limited number of resources for sending out letters, texts, outbound calls and interactive voice response calls. Also, we know that people respond differently to each type of channel. This means that some people are more likely to pay if they receive a text, whereas others are more likely to pay if they receive a letter. We're going to build a separate model for each communication channel. One model for letter, one for SMS, one for outbound calls and one for IVR. The dependent variable, or what we're trying to predict, is whether the account is cured or not, which means whether the customer pays back or not. To do this, we first need to use a decision tree to find the best set of predictors. We will then use a logistic regression model to build a model for each channel. Note that we will apply weights by channel frequency, which takes into account the number of contacts that have been made for each channel. Here is the workflow for modeling those customers contacted by letter. First of all, we'll partition the data to extract only those customers who received a letter. Then we'll build a logistic regression model to predict whether the customer will pay given that they have received a letter. Then we want to validate the model to check its performance. We can see that this model has a strong lift and the C statistic is 0.85, meaning that we have a good model. Once we have built a model for each channel, the next step is to compare the scores of these models to determine the best channel for each customer. This workflow shows how we have scored each channel model and merged these scores together with those of the payback model. We've also created some new variables including next best channel, second best channel and various key performance indicators. These key performance indicators include pounds at risk, pounds recoverable and the expected recovery rate. All of these key performance indicators help us understand the risks of the business and how much money the business can expect to recover. The slide also shows the scored data set containing these generated fields included recommended channel, second best channel, probability of paying back and the key performance indicators. We can see that the top record in this data set has a recommended channel of SMS and a likelihood of repayment of 0.39, which is 39%. Once the data has been generated, a strategy tree can be used to assign recommended channel and understand the impact of these recommendations. In step five, a strategy tree is used to determine the appropriate channel whilst adhering to daily activity constraints. The current daily limits for collections are 1,000 letters per day, 500 IVR calls, 500 outbound calls and 2,500 texts. Firstly, we split on best channel. We can see that for channels other than letter, the number of people in each segment is greater than the daily activity limits. Therefore, for those channels that are not letter, each segment is split by the probability of repayment for that channel. We can see that for IVR, by taking those customers with a probability of repayment over 0.78, we can adhere to a constraint of approximately 500 per day. Likewise for SMS, by contacting customers with a probability of over 0.13, we can adhere to a constraint of 2,500 texts per day. The same principle is applied to outbound calls to target those people most likely to respond and stick within the daily limit of 500 calls. For letters, we can see that 910 people have letter recommended as their best channel. This is below the daily activity level. Therefore, we have identified a segment where the second best channel is letter and who also have a high chance of repayment. So we can see that this first strategy tree identifies those segments that we should target based upon the most appropriate channel, but also by adhering to daily activity constraints. In this step, we have further refined the collection strategy by incorporating months in collection and the likelihood to repay. We know that if a customer has been in collections under six months, there's a much greater chance of self-cure. The segment in pink shows those customers who've been in collections less than six months with a high chance of repayment, and we have assigned the strategy self-cure to this segment. Now we will focus on those customers who've been in collections for less than six months with a lower chance of repayment. 
Within this group, we split on best channel and found 197 customers that we should contact by letter and 708 who should be contacted by SMS. These segments are both below the daily activity limits. For IVR and outbound calls, we also need to split by the probability of repayment for that channel to reduce the number of people contacted and stay within the daily activity limits. So far, by focusing on the top part of the tree, for people who've been in collections less than six months, we've reached the daily limits for IVR and outbound calls, but we have some capacity left for letters and for texts. For these two channels, we'll focus on those who've been in collections over six months with a higher chance of repayment. Those customers in collections over six months with a very low chance of repayment will take no action as we feel that they are very unlikely to pay back. We'll use a combination of best channel and second best channel to identify which segments to target with the remaining letters and texts in order to reach the required activity levels. Overall, this approach is very useful as it not only includes the best channel and activity constraints, but also incorporates months in collections and the likelihood to repay into the decision making process. Let's focus now on a couple of segments that can be influenced to repay. This first segment represents those customers who've been in collections for less than six months. Their probability of repayment is less than 75%, so it's unlikely that they are going to self-cure. We can see that they're most likely to repay if they're contacted by letter. And for these 197 customers, the expected recoverable amount per person is £127. The chart on the right hand side shows that this segment has a much higher expected recoverable amount compared to other segments in the tree. Here is another segment where the recommended action is to contact each customer by letter. These customers have been in collections over six months. Their likelihood to repay is at least 5% and the recommended channel is letter. This segment is interesting as it has a high average amount of money at risk per customer. We can see here that the strategy tree is not only useful for generating segments, but we can also directly measure the impact of the business in terms of the pounds at risk for each segment. Let's now compare these four approaches to understand how each of these impact the business. For each of the strategies, we can see the number of customers targeted by each channel. We can see the associated costs of uh, using these channels to contact customers, and we can see the average recoverable amount per channel. This gives rise to the total recoverable amount per day for each of the four approaches. We can see that for the business rule strategy, overall, the business can recover £162,000 per day. For the payback model strategy, the business can recoup £175,000 per day. The next best channel strategy recoups £213,000 per day. But the Angos Improved Recovery Strategy has the largest recoverable amount of £238,000 per day, so it's by far the best strategy overall. Step 7 involves deployment of the collection strategy. All Angos models can be deployed in a variety of code types, including the language of SAS and SQL. This code is automatically generated and can be exported to the appropriate environment. There are other ways that are even more prescriptive to solve collections objectives. With optimization tools, we can minimize human subjectivity by removing the need for the analyst to make any subjective judgments or additional assumptions, such as the six months period or 5% threshold that we covered in the detailed example. We can also incorporate business rules and constraints with optimization, for example, the maximum number of daily calls, letters, emails, SMSs, and the maximum collections budget. We can also gain greater resolution on the customer level by eliminating the need to group or segment the accounts. We can find the most appropriate channel per customer, which maximizes the collections recovered at the level of the customer or of the entire portfolio. Furthermore, with optimization, we can deploy all models together in one strategy. User-defined requirements that can be introduced are the profit function that can be automatically generated Alternatively, we can introduce user-defined refinements into the profit function, for example, the effect of time. Optimization could also result in a no-treatment action, which means self-cure. For more information on Angos's optimization capabilities, please contact us. We have shown how collections performance can be improved with a combined payback and best channel strategy. In this example, repayment amounts were significantly increased while adhering to daily activity constraints and achieving improved customer experience. In summary, the steps to achieving this included 
replicating the existing business rules and building a payback model, then comparing the business rules and payback model. We then built a model for each communication channel to then compare the scores to determine the best channel. The payback and best channel models were then combined and strategies built and the model deployed. To further enhance a collection strategy, optimization can be considered as a more exact solution to meet all the business constraints without additional assumptions. Angos Data Science Platform caters to analysts with a variety of skill sets and programming languages through the entire data mining process. From advanced data preparation in multiple languages, to predictive modeling using structured and unstructured data, to optimization, model deployment through batch scoring, code generation or real-time scoring, enhanced visual analytics for uncovering and communicating insights, and model management. Angos also offers predictive analytics services and hosted managed services for clients.